Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Welcome to my first uh, virtual extended essay launch. Before I start, I have to say that this is uh, made possible thanks to Mr. Ben Chell, who is accompanying me here. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> um, so I hope that this is a good experience. I hope it's clear enough. I think it will be because you have the possibility of pausing, going back, although I don't know, maybe we want to see me again. <laughs> okay, so welcome to the extended essay. You know who I am. Uh, I've uh, led your journey uh, with a personal project and this time I will do the same with extended essay. You will see that it's very different, very, very different, and you will understand as uh, I go along. Um, the emphasis with extended essay is put on you developing all of the necessary skills that you will need uh, for a university. Uh, and I think that those of you who put the effort and the work that's necessary for this will greatly benefit in your other subjects of the diploma program. So, without further ado, let's begin. What are the aims of the extended essay? We want you to be able to engage in independent research with intellectual initiative and rigor. Uh, the idea is that you are going to further develop your research thinking, self-management and communication skills and you will be reflecting on what you are learning throughout the whole process at three uh, specific times in the whole process. So what is it that you have to do with the extended essay? The extended essay uh, is an academic piece of writing. Uh, it is 4,000 words long, plus 500 for the RPPF form. That's, that's uh, a reflection form that you will have to fill in separately at three specific times of the whole process. And the nice thing about this form is that it is graded. It's, it's graded with a criterion uh, engagement and it takes already six points of uh, your whole grade. So it is very important for you to pay very, very good attention at what it is that you write on this form. The extended essay is based on one of the subjects in your package and it should reflect 40 hours of work spread over DP1 and finishing in early DP2. So, sorry, let's go back to clarify. It has to be one of the subjects in your package. As a starting point, well, you will see that we will talk about that when you come to the core sessions on Friday, which we are starting tomorrow already. It's always uh, very advisable to opt for topics that are of meaningful interest to you, because you are going to be working very intensively on this. Um, I do have to warn you at this point, some subjects are more popular than others. Uh, for example, biology, business, and economics. They are always on high demand every year. And we don't have, uh, many, many times we find ourselves saying to the student, okay, I'm sorry, you won't be able to take this subject because we just don't have enough supervisors. Uh, differently from the personal project, your supervisor will be an expert uh, on this. It has to be a, a subject teacher. So I'm going to explain 
now later how you can make sure that you get chosen or that you get awarded the subject that you would really like to work on. So now I want you to think for a little while. I want you to go to uh, this link that you have here and I would like you to answer uh, the questions that you have here. Uh, so please pause at this moment and do this. Well, I think they have paused now and they Let's have so. done this. And um, you have to do it today because I will be checking at five o'clock all of your answers and it will be my way of seeing who has been to the launch. So please make sure that you do pause and that you do complete this form. Um, is extended essay required for your diploma? Yes, it is. And in order to obtain an IB diploma, the grade has to be A, B, C, or D. If you fail, you don't get a diploma. How is uh, the extended essay assessed? Well, you have uh, five criteria. Focus and method, knowledge and understanding, critical thinking, formal presentation and engagement. You will see that critical thinking is the one that's worth 12 points. And engagement, that's the criterion that uh, assesses your reflections and look at that is six points already so we really want to pay good attention at your reflections if you look at manage back um, I've already entered all of the deadlines throughout uh, the year this process and you will see that I point to different pages of the extended essay book in order for you to have some guidance uh, in whatever it is that you do write on those uh, reflections. But I will tell you a little bit more about the reflections in a moment. So, if you look at the extended essay TOK matrix, I will show you with my mouse, if you get a D in the extended essay, but then you get an E in the TOK, you fail. So this is a very useful chart for you to understand what needs to happen in order for you to get your diploma. Now, let's talk a little bit about your uh, supervisor. Your supervisor uh, will spend three to five hours uh, with you. They will uh, provide with uh, advice specific to the, the topic you have chosen. They will give you general guidelines uh, with regards to appropriate uh, research skills. They also have to check that the work is your own and uh, they will give you feedback on your first draft. Also, they have to sign the RPPA. That's the Reflections on Planning and Progress Form. In order to fill in each of the three reflections that you need on that form, you will have to have a formal meeting with your supervisor. What will your supervisor not do? Your supervisor won't tell you what to write and they won't provide you with a research question. They will provide you with the research or source material. No, they won't, I'm sorry. They won't edit your work and they won't spend more than five hours. That's really not allowed. 
Also, one thing that I have to say, did you know that your supervisor, apart from being your extended essay supervisor, is also your CAS uh, supervisor? Uh, in order to get expert advice on whatever it is that you have to do on CAS, I will always refer you to Ms. Benton, uh, the CAS coordinator. But the extended essay supervisor will help you. Well, you will have the three interviews that you need to have for CAS with this supervisor, and they have to fill in the CAS form for you after having the interview, of course. So it's a good idea for you to combine your extended essay meetings with CAS meetings. They happen more or less at the same time. So the formal uh, reflection sessions, they have to be recorded, as I told you, on the form. Each of these sessions, they uh, last 20 to 30 minutes. And they have to focus uh, on the progress you have made so far and set clear objectives for the rest of the process. They are three mandatory sessions and it's very, very advisable for you to prepare well. As I told you, I will give you guidance on how to prepare. Also, what I tell students is that it's very advisable for them to have this uh, meeting with the supervisor and to record it so that then right after that meeting has taken place you write your reflection. This reflection will be checked by your supervisor, you will upload it on the form and once you have done that the reflection will be locked. That means that you cannot change it anymore, not at the end of the process even. Bear in mind, the three reflections together have to be 500 words, not more than that. So use the words wisely. Of course, there are checking sessions. Checking sessions is uh, what I call more informal kind of, of, of meetings that have to do with uh, meetings that meet your needs as an individual student, right? Uh, things that have to do with maybe 10 minutes, uh, something that you might want to ask about uh, your timeline or maybe some research that you are undertaking. Um, it can also include something that's even longer about a particular issue they don't have to be part of the formal reflection process and they don't need to be reported on planning and progress form. I think that it is important to say that uh, for some students uh, having some kind of regularity in checking in with your supervisor is a good thing. That will keep you on track. You will see that you have one deadline per month but I think it's important to say that you will have to establish your own method of working. You will have to establish, okay, what do I want to do every week? How often do I want to touch base with my supervisor to make sure I keep everything under control? Because this is really independent. Of course, always important your academic integrity, you must acknowledge your sources. So make sure that as you are working, uh, use, make use of your extended essay page on ManageBack. You will see that there is what's called a researcher's uh, space on ManageBack. And you can upload all documents, you can work there. So this is a very good place for me to see what's going on but also for your supervisor. It's also important to say that I will be checking regularly, manage back, and that your supervisor will be flagging your process with the red flags, green flags. Make also sure that you are aware of the IB ethical guidelines. 
they are on this PowerPoint you will see in a moment. And I will publish this PowerPoint on Manage Back. And be careful also with animal and human experimentation policy. Make sure that you are familiar with that. So these are the ethical guidelines for uh, the extended essay research and field work. You can read it at leisure in your own time. Manage back is very important. As I told you, you have here, well, these are all of the files that you will find. Well, academic honesty, in fact, is now academic integrity. You have all kinds of documents about uh, assessment for sessions this launch. You will be able to read examples of essays in every subject. You will see examples of how students have filled in these uh, RPPF forms and every subject has specific guidelines. So you can go there and read more about that. What you will see also is what I was telling you before. This is an example of a page of a student. You have a worksheet, you have a researcher's reflection space where you can work there, you can upload documents, you can communicate with your supervisor, you have assessment where you will be able to see uh, the criteria in detail, and you see the planning and progress form, which is the RPPF. Everything happens on, on Manage Back, so keep uh, a good eye on, on it. Also, as I said, I've entered all of the grades there, um, all of the, not grades, sorry, all of the deadlines there, so everything is well spread out and laid out for you. Um, common problems. Some common problems have to do with um, time management. That's things that I have observed throughout the years and things that the students say. Um, you have to organize your time around uh, deadlines, but you might want to break down the process even further. Uh, what I have heard uh, from students that have worked effectively on the extended essay is that they say that they planned time throughout their week to work on their extended essay. I am sure that you have free periods in your timetable where you can work here at school. I strongly advise you that you devote two periods a week to work on your extended essay. For example, you say, well, okay, on Wednesday I have periods five and six free. Okay, that's for the extended essay. Have that discipline, have that commitment, because I can assure you it will pay off. It will pay off. Also, be careful, science students. Try to plan your experiments to fit the extended essay timeline. I have seen it throughout the years. Sometimes the planning there goes wrong, not because the students are not planning well, but because maybe they are not thinking of possible calamities or problems that they might encounter. So try to be proactive and th think things through. Um, also make sure that you touch base with your supervisor. Don't see them only for the formal reflections. Try to see them uh, regularly. It will give you some peace of mind in the sense that you will say, well, okay, I'm on the right track. Make sure also that throughout the process you record and reference from the very beginning because otherwise by the time you reach the end you won't know where you get, where you got what from where. So be very disciplined with that. Make sure that you use the researcher's reflection space effectively and if you have difficulties, please don't wait until you are drowning. See your supervisor. You can see me as well. You can also see 
Ms. Hetebrey and Mr. Minjing. We are here to help you. So now, where do you start? Well, first of all, you have to brainstorm subject and topic. So, but I would say, if I were you, try to think, well, okay, first of all, what subjects do you enjoy? What topics uh, have you liked? Or what are you curious uh, about? Go and talk with your subject teacher. Be curious, be inquisitive. Look, read, see, uh, pay attention. You have to research your idea and you have to check for sources. Are there several academic references available? Are experiments possible? Only then you can go through with your idea. You have to see if you have enough sources. Otherwise, you have to uh, choose something else. As I said, communicate with your subject teacher. They can help you and uh, make you understand whether the idea is viable, not too broad, not too narrow. We will be helping you, I will be helping you, designing uh, your research question in the course session on Fridays, so please be there. As I said before, you have to find and access enough source material, and you will have to try to find at least five sources that relate to your research question. Of course, you can use more, but at least five. Then you will have to fill in and upload your application form to the deadline on Manage Back on November 15th. No, that's not right. It's not November 15th. Please ignore what you see there. Uh, that's a mistake. November 15th was yesterday, so that's not possible. You will see that there is uh, a deadline for your application form. That's in December. It's already on Manage Bank. So again, no, again, no. I tell you now. When you hand in your application form, as I told you, we just don't have enough supervisors for all of the students that want to take economics or business or biology. So you will have to fill in two choices of subject. I will do my best to give you your first choice, but unfortunately that is not always possible. You make sure that you come up with a well thought out research question because how does this work? I will receive all of the application forms and I will give subject teachers all of the, your ideas. Your teachers will decide whether they want to work with you or not. So, ooh, what does that mean? It means that you should really approach your subject teacher discuss possibilities, come up with a well thought out and, uh, research question, investigate five sources and you make critical notes of your findings. And then also I will ask you to provide emergent questions that have risen from your research. So if I have a set of uh, candidates for biology, I will send all of the application forms with the, to the biology teachers and they will see, wow, this is an interesting question. Wow, look at the sources that they have looked at. They have very interesting emerging questions. Yes, I want to work with that student. That's how you will get your choice of subject. Um, it's been interesting to do this. Um, I hope that, uh, well, I don't know. I don't see myself here. Well, it's been interesting. I hope that you uh, have understood more or less what is expected of you. And as I said, I will see all of you um, tomorrow in the first core session. So, see you guys. Thank you for... Uh, watching.